Now, in this video, we're going to add to the select clause by adding the from clause. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this semicolon, press carriage return and type the word from. Well, you can see the red squiggly underline is back. What SQL Server is now expecting is the name of a table. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag dbo.transactions from the object explorer into my query window. So there is our select statement with a from clause as well. So let's execute that and we'll see that there are 8,845 rows. Success! Except each row contains the numbers 2, 6 and 8. It's not actually retrieving any data from SQL, from the transactions database, the transactions table. So why is that? Well, because we've got the columns that we just invented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of these fields I've previously put in and instead put in an asterisk or star. So I'll select star and I'll just change this so that it's all of the same case. Select star from dbo.transactions. Now what the star does is say I want to retrieve all of the columns. And we can tell what columns there are by clicking on this plus next to this particular table and then click on the next plus next to columns. So execute and there we have our data that we've previously put in. Now if you don't want all of these columns then you have to get rid of the star and start again. So that's the case even if you've got say 20 columns and you wanted 19 of them. So you have to list the ones you want, not the ones you don't want. So I want purchase order ID, comma, quantity ID, and product ID. Okay, let's execute that. And we've got one, two, three columns. And one, two, where's the third column? Well, there was a missing comma in what I have put in. And so what it has done is it's treated that as saying, give me the order quantity, but let's call it product ID. So this is a real way, a real reason for having the as. If I have it in every single query, then I know that I'm not going to have these little problems, at least it reduces the likelihood. Now, it's not the case that you have to drag things, you can type. So if I start typing, you can see that the computer tries to auto-complete it, or at least give some suggestions. So purchase order ID after just two characters is a suggestion. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to get to purchase order ID and press the tab key and that auto-completes it. So if I execute that, we've now just got the one column. Now, I'm not just limited to running one query at once. I could have multiple queries. So I'll select the unit price from dbo.transactions, for instance. And if I execute that, we now have the results of two queries, one underneath each other. And you can see the total 17,690 rows is exactly double the number of rows that we've got. First time it's giving us the purchase order ID, the second time it's giving us unit price. So we've now combined the select clause with the from clause, and we can add as many different columns as we want and execute that. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to create another table and we're going to combine this with this existing query. What I want is a description of this particular item. So it's fine knowing that it's product ID one, but what is it in reality? So that's in the next video.